So in this example, we have a painting that's hanging in an art gallery, and it has a height of three meters, and it's hung so that its lower edge is about one meter above the eye of an observer. So I've got that drawn in the diagram here. Our painting, which is sort of this thickened black line, the eye of the observer, and we see that the bottom of the painting is about one meter above the eye of the observer. So we want to know how far from the wall should the observer stand to get the best view. What does it mean to get the best view of a painting? So I've indicated here what that means. It means that the observer wants to maximize the angle theta subtended at the eye by the painting. So here I've indicated this angle theta and it is this angle between the viewing lines to the bottom of the painting and the top of the painting. And you want to get this maximum viewing angle, this maximum viewing angle. That's where the painting looks the largest to you. And hence, you get the best view of it. So that's what we want to maximize. Now let's have a look. Just so we get an idea of what's going on here. Worked up a quick dy dynamic illustration. So we've got our observer, we've got our painting, and the observer is trying to figure out the best place to stand. So notice that as the observer moves, the angle subtended at their eye by the painting changes. You can see that over here it's pretty small. And you can watch the numbers. I've indicated the angle here. You can see that it's getting bigger and bigger. So the closer they're moving here means they're getting a better viewing angle and it's getting bigger. They're still getting a better viewing angle. The painting's looking quite large to them and that's good. They can see it in all its great detail. And then at some point they sort of hit the biggest value possible and you can see now the numbers are decreasing again. And now they've got a terrible viewing angle. So at some point over here there's sort of a sweet spot for viewing it. You know, 6, 0 0.63, 0.64, up oh, now we're back down to 0.63. So somewhere over here is the sweet spot for viewing this painting and that's what we're wanting to find. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. So we want to maximize the viewing angle. That means we want to look at the viewing angle as a function of something that changes. Since we're interested in the distance that the viewer is from the wall and finding the optimal position, that's going to be our variable that we're going to express the angle in terms of. So we're going to let x be the distance from the observer to the wall, in, in which case this means the painting. So it's the horizontal distance to the painting. Theta was already de de defined in the question itself, so I don't need to define that variable. Now I'm interested in finding theta in terms of x. Now how can I do that? I've got this triangle here. It's not a right triangle, so I can't seem to see immediately how to relate the angle with this side length here. Notice this side length is the length of this horizontal line. Nothing to do with the two blue lines I've highlighted. So how can I get a relationship? Well, one way is to exploit the fact that we do have this right triangle lurking in the background here. And so what I can do is I can notice that, well, that angle theta is this angle alpha minus this angle beta. So theta is equal to alpha minus beta. You may think I've made things more complicated, but the point is, is that alpha and beta are now angles in this right triangle. And so if I look at angle alpha, alpha is related to the height of the big right triangle and the base of the big right triangle by tangent. Tan of alpha is side opposite, 4 over the side adjacent, which is x. So that means that alpha is arc tan of 4 over x. And what about beta? Well, beta, now that's that little triangle here. Maybe I'll highlight that in purple. 
got this little triangle here. And maybe just to make it entirely clear, let's look. Tangent of beta is side opposite 1 over side adjacent, which is x. So what that means is that beta is arc tan of 1 over x. And so there we go. We've got our theta expressed entirely in terms of our variable x. What do we want to do? We want to maximize theta not over all possible x values. We want to find the maximum value of theta on an interval. What interval do we want to look at? Well, we don't want to consider x to be negative because that means that the observer is on the other side of the wall. Well, they'd have to pass through the wall to get to negative x values. So we don't want to consider negative x values. So we want to maximize theta on the interval. We could include 0, but the problem is 0 is not, if we look at the function here, we can't plug 0 in. So we're going to say we're going to maximize it on 0, not including 0, to what? Well, there's probably some other physical restrictions we have on x. Like the observer can't back up forever because they'll probably run into another wall behind them. But for the intents and purposes of this problem, we don't have that other restriction. So we can say, well, let's just suppose they can back up as far as they want. And then we'll see if there is a sweet spot for viewing the painting for any x value. So we want to maximize theta on this interval. So Maybe I should indicate that this is an interval for x. So for x in that interval there. OK, so again, let me just indicate that this was our pre-calc, pre-calculus, setting up the objective function from the word problem. Now we're going to go into calculus mode, and we're going to optimize this thing. So how do we optimize this? Well, we're going to compute its derivative find any critical numbers, and see where the maximum occurs. So I take its derivative. What's the derivative of arctan? Well, the derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus whatever's inside squared times the derivative of the inside. So it's 1 over 1 plus the inside function squared times the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of the inside function, that's 4 over x. So its derivative is a negative 4 over x squared. And then we also have the derivative of the next one, which is 1 over 1 plus 1 over x squared times the derivative of the inside function, 1 over x. The derivative of that is negative 1 over x squared. So I'll put extra brackets around there just to make it clear. OK, so now we're going to want to set this thing equal to 0. But before we do that, we should try to simplify it a little bit. I can multiply these two ratios. x squared gets multiplied to everything in the bottom. So that becomes an x squared plus and a 4 squared, which is 16, over x squared times x squared. So the x squared is going to cancel. And I'd be left with a 16 on the bottom and a negative 4 on the top. And then I get a plus 1 over x squared plus 1. And so that's theta prime of x. Now I want to set this thing equal to 0. So maybe I'll indicate that here. We're looking for the critical numbers, potential places for maxima and minima. So we're going to set it equal to 0. That means that we want negative 4 over x squared plus 16 plus 1 over x squared plus 1 equal to 0. Or in other words, we want 1 over x squared plus 1 equal to 4 over x squared plus 16. We'll clear denominators. We'll multiply both sides by x squared plus 1 and x squared plus 16. So that means we get an x squared plus 16 on this side and a 4x squared plus 4 on this side. So that means we get 3x squared and a 12. Or in other words, x squared has to be 4. Or in other words, x has to be, and you may be tempted here to write plus or minus 2. But the problem is, we're only interested in x values from 0 to infinity. We're thinking of that as the domain of our function in this case. We're not letting x values take any values. They've got to be strictly positive. So that means x is equal only to 2, is 
our critical number. So there's our critical number. Now we want to find the maximum. We can't use the closed interval method here because we're not dealing with a function defined on a closed interval. It's defined at neither endpoint. So what can we do instead? Well, what we can do is we can look at the sign chart and see if that helps us any. So here's 0, here's 2, and then we're heading off to infinity. So there's our axes that we're interested in looking at the function on. What's our sine of our derivative? So I can look back at our function up here, and I can say, well, I know the critical number, so I know the sine has to be the same in each of these intervals. So I'm going to pick a test point in the 0 to 2 interval, let's say 1, plug it into the function. That becomes a negative 4 over 17. Negative 4 over 17, and the other part is 1 over 2. So 1 half is bigger than negative 4 over 17. So this will be positive. So then I can pick another test point over here, say 3, plug it in and we'll see we get a negative value. So what that means for our function, theta, is that it's increasing and then it's decreasing. So that means that we have a max or a maximum at x equals 2. Let's go back and reread the question. Do we need to find the value of theta? How far from the wall should the observer stand to get the best view? So we've already found that. We've maximized the function theta, found its maximum value occurs at 2. So the observer should stand 2 meters from the wall to get the best view. So let's come back to our applet and see what we've got. So we're going to watch this number. Our best viewing angle means we want this number to be as big as possible. So you can see it's starting to increase. So we're getting a better viewing angle as we move closer to the wall. Still getting bigger, 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 bigger. Still bigger. We're getting a better viewing angle. 6, 4. Oh, let's drop back down again. So let's look very carefully. 6, 3, 6, 4. 6, 4, 12, 23, 25, 27, 29, 30, 32, 33, 34, 35. Oh, it dropped back down. So it looks like the biggest value we got was at 0.6435. And I look down here and I see, well, that's not 2. Well, let's look a little bit more closely. If I move this a little bit, notice that I'm able to change. Oh, notice that. Here I'm at 2.0015, and my angle is 0.6435, and I move a little bit. Now I'm less than 2 meters away, and my angle is still 0.6435. So what this means is there's rounding going on behind the scenes, so I'm not able to get an entirely clear view. So this is just one of the issues to be aware of. If we use any sort of tools to help us try to solve a problem like this, we have to be aware of the problems there are with using approximations to solve the problem. Here we're dealing with rounding issues going on behind the scenes. But we can see that it looks like we're hovering around 2 to be the best spot to view the painting. And what we've done is we've confirmed that. We've confirmed that using calculus. And so this is our accurate solution and it agrees with our applet which gives us an idea of possibly where the optimal solution is. So just be aware of that, that oftentimes using technological tools can get you a good idea of what's going on, but it may not be able to provide you with the exact answer, and that's where our tools from calculus come in. All right, that's it for this example, and we'll move on to the next one now.